What's going on everyone? Data Report here with another edition of the Pandemic Update. Today is Tuesday, March 21st, 2023. This is the first video we've done since last week. Not much in the way of news since last week. However, there are three COVID positives in celebrities that have happened over the last week since our last update. Eddie Kingston, who is a professional wrestler, tested positive for COVID back on Friday, March 17th of this year. He is 41 years old. Dick Durbin, who is a senator out of Illinois, tested positive for COVID on Sunday, March 19th of this year. He is 78 years old and at this time, as you can guess, is saying that he is only having mild symptoms. Finally, an India actor, Kiran Her, announced on Monday, March 20th of this year, that she has tested positive for COVID. She is 70 years old. Let's take a look at wastewater, shall we? Wastewater does show some interesting things here. We've actually lost some of the moderate to high sites that we had in the Great Lakes. There's actually less of them now. Still quite a few moderate sites over Ohio, and I think a lot of that attributes to sites that are just not updating frequently enough. New England is not doing bad at all. I thought for sure we would have started seeing some rising numbers in the Boston area because of St. Patrick's Day, and so far we are not seeing that. Maine, you still have a few moderate to high locations, but if you dive deeper into them at this time, they are starting to drop now. So that is some surprisingly good news, because if you recall, last year at this time, the spring wave was starting to get going in the northeast. Right now, honestly, we are not seeing that in wastewater data. Another surprise in the data is Florida. Look at this. Let's actually take a look at a few sites. Yes, wastewater is starting to rise in Orange County. Yes, wastewater is rising at this other site in Orange County, but for the moment, it's still relatively low. Let's take a look at Miami. Miami? Yeah, Miami-Dade? 776,000 people at this wastewater site, and it's still dropping. We'll see what happens. We'll give it another week. I mean, it is spring break, and you would expect to see a rise there right now. And at the moment, we're just not seeing it. Here's one in South Carolina. Charleston's at 64,000 population in this sewer shed. It's coming up as high, but look at this. Rapidly dropping now, so that's some good news. Still seeing some high readings in Nebraska. And Missouri, that's a relatively quite a few number of areas that are reporting moderate transmission there. And look at this, some really good news. Utah. Remember we had all these clustered sites that were moderate to high? Check this out. They're now low readings. All, Almost all of them are down to low readings. We are increasing the number of moderate readings in the Bay Area of California, and that's relatively concerning. Moving on to the community transmission map. 1,129 counties in the United States are at high transmission. 726 are at substantial transmission, 986 are at moderate transmission, and 381 are in low transmission. So despite there being a lot more yellow, moderate transmission on the map, hey, it has increased by 4.87% and high transmissions down by almost 6%, substantials down by almost 4%. That's good news, but we still need to get this lower we need to do a lot better the biggest surprise on this map take a look at rural texas a ton of counties in rural texas are now at low transmission but you also have a few that are surrounding that area that are at high transmission so why that's some good news i would still stay cautious because we know going into the summertime there will likely be a summer wave in the south but hey so far we're not seeing that spring wave happen yet in the northeast but let's give it another couple weeks because it does take time for the st patrick's day effect to come into play and let's give it a few more weeks and see what happens as we head into april moving on now to the latest very important update xbb 1.5 is still ahead at 90.2 percent bq 1.1 then comes in second at 3.5%, XBB at 2.5%, and then the newer XBB 
one, 0.5.1 at 2.2%. Still no signs of the XBB 1.6 or 1.9. I think there is a 1.9. Now there's quite a few XBBs around the world. None of the other ones have entered the picture here in the United States yet. And we'll get another update on this on Friday. All right, this is something I wanted to show to you today. Speaking of spring waves, this is Center County, Pennsylvania. There's one hospital in that county. It's Mount Nittany Medical Center. This is where Penn State University is located. Back last week on the 18th, they had just four people hospitalized. Then on the 19th, it went up to six people. Then on the 20th, it went up to nine people. And now it's up to 11 people. Why am I showing this? Because look what's happening here. It's starting to rise again. If this can happen at one hospital in rural Pennsylvania, with a university or a college town, I should say, chances are this is starting to happen at other hospitals, and it makes you wonder, with so many hospitals not reporting anymore, how many hospitals are actually seeing rises in the number of people hospitalized right now? you got to stop and wonder about that. So something to ponder on and think about. Let's take a look at New York State. New York State has 704 positive cases in the last 24 hours. That's actually, honestly, that is not bad at all. We know that's an undercount, but still, look at the chart here. Cases are dropping despite there being an undercount. They are really dropping in New York State. I'm just totally blown away by how low things have gone in New York State. 2.4% positivity, lower than the seven-day average of 2.5%. And look at hospitalizations. Yes, I know, not all long-term care facilities are being reported on, but last week we ended the week with 1,275 people hospitalized in New York. 131 people were in the ICU. This is Tuesday, where we usually see a jump up, and we're not even seeing that today. They continue to drop today. 1,269 people in the hospital. 123 people in the ICU. At this point, you're probably thinking, is data reports starting to minimize? No, I'm not starting to minimize, but I mean, look at the data here. It's just encouraging news. I know we're underreporting everything, but this is some of the best data we've seen in a long time, and we have to face reality that we're seeing that. Unfortunately, it's not going to last. We're going to see a rise sooner or later. It's happening in Europe. I will show that to you in a moment. First off, here's the latest out of Texas. Texas will update again tomorrow. 5,864 cases last week. 7,133 probable cases in this update. They had 87 reported deaths on this update from last week. They also had 1,405 people in the hospital. I'm expecting this number to be low again tomorrow. It's way too early for their next wave to start, which will probably get going late April, early May, because if you recall last year, it happened earlier than it did with the Delta wave. Here's the BNO numbers. This again shows more positive news. 171,725 cases last week. However, there is some negative news on this. Two negative pieces on this. One, not all 50 states reported. 49 out of 50. And second of all, take a look at this. This is not good at all. This needs to be we need to fix this big time. There were still 2,225 deaths added last week. That is totally ridiculous. How can we still have 2,200 deaths at this portion of the pandemic with vaccines and booster shots? It's just mind-boggling. Yes, you can attribute it to some who do not want to get the vaccine. Sure, there's anti-vax deaths still, but you have also vaccinated and boosted people passing away. Why? Because we're still continuing to let this spread out of control. And just the deaths alone show how much we are underreporting on cases and hospitalizations. In the hospital last week, or at least as of this update, 21,091 people in the hospital. In the ICU, 2,784. BNO did another update yesterday. Let's take a look at that here. And in that update, they had 20,528 people in the hospital. Quickly taking a look at Walgreens here. Walgreens is dropping in the east. The positivity at Walgreens nationally is 25.3%. The prior week was 27.2%. Here's where the bad news comes into play. 15,564 people tested. Prior week, 18,622. The biggest notice from that is 
Look at this here from about just north of Texas, right on up through Montana. Testing is significantly down, therefore you see a big area of red here, where the positivity is significantly rising. We won't do Wyoming. Wyoming's not reporting for some reason. Here's a good example. Colorado, positivity rapidly rising. It's up 5.5% at 29.7%. Total test, 462. Prior week, 526. Big drop in testing. Oklahoma, similar deal. Not as big as the drop, but positivity is definitely rising. 29% positivity this week. 22.4% last week. Difference of up 6.5%. So while, yes, cases may be on the rise in this area, you also have a very big drop in testing. Here you go again. New Mexico, 154 tests last week, or this week, 186 last week. That's a difference of up 6.6% in terms of positivity, which is at 35.1%. Take a look at this. Here's a big drop in testing. Arizona, 451 tests this week, 645 last week. Positivity rose 5.6%. Current week's positivity 35%. Prior week was 29.5%. Enough about that. Let's take a look here at this week's um, some update on the international cases. We do have some concerning areas to report on. Russia, cases are up 4%. France, cases in France are now up 164%, 47,584 in the current seven days, only 18,053 in the previous seven days. And yes, that's starting to bleed over to the deaths as well, because their deaths are now up 17%. Chile, cases up 13%, deaths up 11%. Poland, cases are now down 1%, but their deaths are up 38%. Coming down here to Ukraine. Ukraine has a 20% increase in cases, also a 37% increase in deaths. Then there is India, or no, let's do Iran first. Iran, cases are up 109%, deaths are up 82%. Then there is India. India is up 90% on cases. India has not had a significant wave in a very long time. 5,646 cases in the current seven days, previous seven days had 2,971. Deaths are up 167%, 24 deaths this week, and just nine deaths in the previous seven days. Costa Rica, cases are now down 11%. However, deaths are up 40%. So yeah, places that are seeing cases rising are also seeing a surge in deaths. So the deaths have not fully decoupled from the cases yet, which goes to show the moral of this whole update, the moral of the whole story, the pandemic is not over. While there is a short-term encouraging sign here in the United States, it's not going to last. The data is clearly being suppressed. The pandemic is not over. They're just trying to make the data look as good as possible. And we know, we know things are worse than being reported because let's go back to BNO again, shall we? Let's just take a look at those deaths one more time. And you'll see here in the weekly update from BNO, 2,225 deaths this week, which is just utterly ridiculous. We need that number to get below 1,000, below 500 in a week, and it's not there yet. People are still getting long COVID. People are still sick. I'm still sick of long COVID. Heck, I'm sick of talking about this all the time, which is one of the reasons why we do less updates now. Alrighty, that does it for today's update. We'll probably do another one tomorrow and Thursday as well, because Wednesday is the day with the most data out. But it may not be out in time for our video, so we'll also do another one Thursday to report on that data. Alright, until next time, stay safe everyone. Thanks for watching this video. If you're new to the channel, hit the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all again next time. Thanks for watching.